If you've ever considered using a red light therapy device in your sauna, you need to watch this video. Hey guys, it's Alex here from alexfigures.com and right now I'm doing something that I think you should never ever do. And that is using a red light therapy panel, like I have here, while inside a sauna. I'm inside my Sunstream Evolve 20. Now the sauna's not on, uh, though the red light therapy panel is on. Now this is something I get asked about a lot. Like, hey, I'm thinking of getting the red light therapy panel so I can use it while I'm sitting inside my sauna. Which one is best? Uh, you know, which panel is going to fit? All these other questions. And I'm like, yeah, just, just don't do it. I, I can understand why you may want to do that. Like you're sitting in a in your sauna for 10, 15, 20 minutes, however long it may be. Why not tap into the benefits of red light therapy while you're in it? All right, I get it. However, I think it's a really bad idea. Um, not necessarily from a biological, um, biohacking point of view. Uh, uh, some people have said that you shouldn't combine red light therapy in hot environments, and uh, I'm not really going down that path. The reason why I think it's a bad idea is purely from a safety point of view. I'm sitting in an infrared sauna. That's what a lot of people have in their homes now. You don't have to worry about ventilation and all that. Uh, you sit inside an infrared sauna, you get hot. With heat comes sweating, sweating, moisture, drops off your head, all that sort of jazz. A red light therapy panel is an electric device made of metal, metal casing, with lots of air vents. You can even directly see inside and see the circuits and the wires. All these air vents, all the panels have air vents, fans, all that sort of jazz. If water were to get in there, you have a problem. Not only is your panel potentially going to malfunction, but worse, you could cause some serious electrocution risks, especially given that this case is made of metal, right? Uh, if something, if, if, if you were to look down and, I don't know, some sweat dripped off your nose, goes into the, through the vents, hits the wiring, sparks fly, yeah, it's not good, right? It's, it's the main reason why I don't recommend doing it. Again, I'm doing it right now to film it, the sauna's not on, I'm not sweating, there's no water bottles around, nothing like that. Uh, no, I don't even think there's an exception. Um, the other issue is you've somehow got to get the cable in here, um, which is going to cause issues. Uh, these devices, these panels, aren't designed to be used near water. It's just, it's just silly, right? You just wouldn't do it. Secondly, I don't even know how well these devices would work in a high heat environment. I mean, if this gets up to 65 degrees, humidity might start going up, uh, whatever, like uh, this, that alone may cause an issue with this. Now, I know a lot of people might be bummed here because they think, oh, you know, I really wanted to use, you know, I could imagine putting that panel here and one over there and I'd come in and, and sweat it out and turn the, the, the red lights on. I, I get it. I mean, I had that thought years ago when I first entered this space and then it was like, hey, actually, that's probably not the wisest idea. And even if you're thinking, look, I'll mount them up high, I'll angle them down, there's no chance that sweat will get in it. I mean, would you, do you really want to risk it? What happens if, I don't know, somehow a little bit of moisture gets in there, you stand up, you turn around, your shoulder bumps it, the whole thing's charged, you get a zap, pass out. I mean, yeah. Saunas are designed in a certain way, they have to meet very strict criteria. Uh, very strict uh, electrical um, regulations and all that sort of jazz. Um, I think if you come and add an electrical device in here that has exposed circuits, which effectively it does, in a metal case, you're asking for a problem. So that's just my uh, opinion, I guess, but hopefully you can see the logic behind it and, and hopefully it's enough to persuade you from using uh, your red light therapy panel in the sauna. I do have two potential workarounds though, uh, ways you can utilize your red light therapy panel and your sauna. Uh, but before we go through those solutions, I just want to do a quick shout out uh, to Test Pro Lab. Now, this is a supplement from Opti Nutria. Uh, I've been using this uh, for a month or so now, and it is my it is now my go-to testosterone booster. Uh, it's got vitamin D, vitamin K, a bit of zinc and boron in there, but you've also got ashwagandha, d acid, uh, macuna purins, and a few other bits and pieces. It's made from a company that are very passionate about the best ingredients, the best manufacturing process. There's no harmful fillers in this. In fact, everything in this is screened 
to make sure that there's no chemicals or substances in this product that are on the uh, water ban list, which is quite important for athletes and myself with all my training uh, and goals. So if you're after a, a really good um, testosterone booster, check out check out Testo Lab Pro by Opti Nutra. I'll put a link to it below. Okay, so what are the two ways you can incorporate red light therapy panel and a sauna? Well, the first is using the red light therapy device while the sauna is warming up. Now, this is what I actually do. Uh, I have my red light therapy panels mounted on the outside of the sauna. Um, sauna takes 10 to 20 minutes to heat up. So while it's heating up, I do my red light therapy session. It's perfect. Do it all, then come in here, separate the two. Great. The other solution is to mount the panel on the outside of the sauna so it's shining in through the glass. Now, of course, this may get a bit tricky, like how you're gonna mount it, especially this sauna, because the only glass here is on the front and most of that glass is the door, so how are you gonna mount it on the door? If you've got a larger sauna, you could probably put it on the, the glass front windows, uh, but that could be an issue depending on your sauna. There are issues with that approach as well. Uh, I've actually tested what happens to the light through the glass, I'll put a link to that below. You do lose a little bit of the radiance, the, the glass uh, has a filtering effect, so you gotta keep that in mind as well. Uh, of course, you've still then gotta figure out how you're gonna wire it all and all that sort of jazz, um, but that could be uh, a potential outcome, though then you've gotta look into what's happening with the body when you're combining heat and red light therapy, and if that's an issue, and it's something I still don't have a hard answer on yet. Finally, as a bonus, there are some companies, some sauna companies now, coming out with red light therapy options, add-ons, uh, accessories. Now, I don't know too much about them. I want to check out some of these saunas one day and hopefully do a review, so be sure to subscribe. Um, but that could be another option. If you, if you really want to combine the two, maybe see how they've made it so you know that the, the company itself has incorporated the two of them instead of you you know getting extension cords and drilling holes and 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 doing the dodgy uh let's see what the manufacturers have done and how they've incorporated it. so that could be another another option all right that's it from me i hope you've enjoyed this video um if you've got any questions or comments please leave them below if you want to check out any of my other red light therapy videos i'll, I'll put links to them below as well I might actually do uh, a sauna session now that I'm sitting in here, rather comfortable. Of course, I'll be removing this first. All right, guys, we'll see you soon.